right, community, we are really excited about this unique interview today with Scotty and Leslie. This couple has a really interesting story. What I find really awesome is that they actually knew each other for 10 years before they started to date, and then they were dating long distance and then decided to go to Asia together for six months, which we'll ask them about that. And it's really exciting to see what they're creating around inviting couples into adventure and wanderlust and really wearing their love on their sleeve all around the world. And by day, or really for Leslie by night, she's working as a nurse, a night shift, which is amazing, thank goodness for nurses. Scotty is really an inspiring leader in health and wellness. He's really focusing on personal training, but when you see them, they're constantly posting about their uh, weekly recipes, and they're just really demonstrating a healthy and vibrant and adventurous relationship. And I'm excited to have you both on the show. Hello. Hello! We are so excited to be here. <laughs> We're so happy to be here. Wow, I love your energy already, and it's so perfect that it you are about couples bringing in adventure and experiencing adventure into their life. And even before we get into that, we love asking this question. So, Leslie, you first. We like to ask, before you were together, did you know what you were looking for in a partner? And we do get that you knew each other for 10 years, but before you started dating and got into a relationship, did you know what you were looking for in a partner? Um, absolutely, I did. Um, and the only reason I knew exactly what I wanted or had an idea of what God even wanted for me was because I had the complete opposite in my past relationships. Um, and so through, uh, I was actually married before, and so through my experience with my ex, um, I was able to really kind of pick pieces of things that really aligned with me and things that really didn't. And so through my separation and then being on my own, living in a state by myself uh, for over a year, I was really able to piece together, okay, this is what I want in a partner. This is what I know I need in a partner. Um, and then that's when Scotty King came along. That's when I appeared. <laughs> what were a couple of those things that you really got clear on that you wanted in a partner? Um, for me, I really saw how important it would be to have a partner that shares the same interests, hobbies, desires, and passions as me. Um, instead of, okay, well, that's your thing. This is my thing. Let's, you know, I'm going to go do my thing. Yes, it's good to have those times, but really at the core of what you're passionate about or what interests you, I love sharing that with Scotty. And I knew that was going to be important for me going forward around health and fitness, around, I'm, I've always been a free kind of spirit. So around adventure, around travel, around helping people. So all of those things were very important to me. And also someone that could share my spirituality, um, pray with me, uh, however I want to practice my religion, but have that in a partnership as kind of the base of my partnership. I knew that was very important too. I love that clarity. That's beautiful. And for you, Scotty. <clears throat> well, so... When Leslie, the intention when uh, Leslie and I started talking, it was not, I didn't have the intention of dating her. I didn't have an intention of being with her. It was pure, mm -hmm. just a solid foundation of friend, being friendship, being, a, being friends, developing a foundation to get to know each other. I had been single for two years before Leslie and I started talking. And within that two years, that allowed me to grow and evolve within myself, within as an ind individual to figure out who exactly I wanted, what kind of life I desired to have. So when Leslie and I started talking, it developed, you know, just through Facebook, through deep questions, it wasn't your no normal small talk, it was, you know, <laughs> getting down to like, what are you passionate about? What makes you feel significant? What are your needs? Uh, what's really getting clear on your the person's passions and their visions and their plans for their life. And then from there, as we started talking and developed into a connection, we developed a strong connection and that led to phone conversations that led to monthly challenges. Since we couldn't see each other, we developed monthly challenges um, where we were able to interact with each other from long distance in unique ways. 
through videos, through spiritual challenges, through meditation. And that's just developed a strong foundation for the, for the both of us. And for me, I knew it was important for me to have somebody, because I, I would say I'm more of a kind of introvert at times <laughs> and it, within myself. So I needed, I, I know I needed to find someone or who, who fits me well and aligns with me as someone who's very expressive and open and kind of the opposite of me, because that just creates a really nice balance between the both of us. And I wanted a vi I you know desired someone who is a visionary who who has you know come a long way who have came, overcame a lot of adversities in life. So through all the, our conversations, our solid foundation of connection, it, it all aligned properly, and now we are where we are today and have this like loving, adventurous relationship. I love it so much. I, there were about a hundred questions that popped up in what you were sharing. And so I know I have one and then Aaron's going to ask something. I wanted to ask because you mentioned the transformation that you had really experienced for yourself before you, you know, began communicating with Leslie. And I love this because I think that there's something powerful about who we become and being ready to receive and attract that partner. So do you think that if you had started to talk to Leslie maybe three years before that, that it would have turned out, that it would have continued to progress as it is? That's a really good question. And Leslie, Leslie and I always kind of joke about that mm -hmm. because if I, you know, three years ago, four years ago, if we had men attempted to talk, I would have... For me personally, I would have totally sabotaged a relationship mm -hmm. with my insecurities and with my uh, lack of love for myself. Mm -hmm. So that's a really good question. What we always say, like, I'm glad that we did not meet in high school and tried to talk mm -hmm. because I it would have been a disaster. disaster. It would have been a toxic relationship. <laughs> we would have um, fed off of each other in a very negative way. Yeah. So Thank throughout the couple. That. Yeah. I completely agree. Aaron and I say the same thing about us. Well, the interesting thing is that you didn't start dating until the time was actually right. So some people that are listening to this may think, oh man, I don't want to mess up. Maybe it's not the right timing. But what I gathered from what you just said is you knew each other for 10 years. So it wasn't until, it wasn't like you would have gotten together when it wasn't right. You got together when it was the exact right time. So I think that's actually a beautiful point to take away. And Leslie, I wanted to ask you a particular question because we do have a lot of couples that will listen to this and will be long distance. And I absolutely love what you said about creating games. So for couples to take this away, what were some of the challenges that you created to you know, continue to deepen and grow your relationship and, and curiosity and adventure while being long distance? Um, well, I can list a couple. Uh, one of them, we did a meditation challenge and I mean, keep it simple. Um, but what we did was as individuals, because we were living in separate States, the challenge was, uh, to meditate for at least 10 minutes every day. And then at some point throughout the day, shoot a text or a, a phone call, but we, he was in school, I was working nights. So shoot a text and share your experience during your meditation. What came up for you? good, bad, whatever you were feeling. Um, and that way I got to kind of see like what was coming up for him without having to have, you know, sometimes it's just not realistic to have three hour phone conversations every single day. We have, you know, you have your own individual life when you're separate, living separate. So it was able, I was able to really see what was going on in his world. And it was so cool because we went from really not meditating at all in our personal lives or maybe dabbling in it to it becoming a part of our everyday practice. So that was really cool. We also did a similar, um, we did a prayer challenge, start with meditation and then actually pray to your source. And we would share our prayers, like what we prayed about and kind of what came up for us. Um, so things like that to and where, and the third one, there was a third one. The, where we shared videos, where oh, we would ask right. the question. Oh, that's right. That was the first one. Yeah. And another really fun one, a creative one that we did, which was actually the first one, once we got built this fun, uh, foundation of communicating through, via messages and um, text messages and phone calls, we, we stepped it up by creating videos. So I would ask her a question. Like one that stood out for me was, uh, Leslie, that uh, she had asked me was, um, out of the five love languages, which one, what are your, what's your love language? 
And at the time, I didn't know that. So I had to do the research to find out what the five love languages were. Then I had an answer in a video of myself saying, you know, what my love languages are and how it's important for me for those needs to be met. So that was really fun because, you know, it, especially when you're new, we were new and that nervous to get on a mm -hmm. little video or whatever. But yeah. that way I, I was able, we were able to see each other and really kind of connect, yeah. but we both were very busy. So it wasn't ideal for us to always be FaceTiming either. So you have to find what works for you and your life, but not falling into, oh, I'm too busy. I just can't talk. Da, 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 da. Because it was very important to me that I got to know Scotty on a deeper level even with thousands of miles between us, and it is possible. I love that you said you really wanted to know Scotty on a deeper level, and I think that you know some of the people listening, but even people who haven't yet listened to this podcast who are experiencing long-distance dating, they don't even know that they can get to know someone deeper. You know, until we're introduced to the world of personal development, transformation, we really only know dating as, so what'd you do today? You know, how was the meeting? You know, yeah. just the day-to-day -day conversation. So I know that personal development, spiritual development is really an important priority for both of you. But take us back to when that began for you. Like, how did you find those questions, ask each other? Because, you know, unless you're introduced to those questions, people don't know to ask that of each other. So where did you find those kind of questions like, you know, what are your desires? What is your love language? Just where did you find out those ideas for questions? Well, for me personally, I've been through, you know, an ongoing transformation every day for the, since the past five years. Um, and how I remember reaching out to Leslie and asking these different unique questions because I truly wanted to get to know her as a friend and to develop a strong foundation through a friendship by getting to know who she is, not what she does, but who she is. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the questions that popped up for me and still continue to do are from, I, I read, I, in the past five years, I have, I have dug deep into personal development books. Um, for, you know, past five years, I've read a lot of books on a weekly basis that just caused me that, that, um, give me the ability to think outside the box of different questions of desires, passions, visions, dreams, um, personalities, characteristics, and traits through just, just a lot of videos and a lot of books and, per, and, and past experience from who I used to be. I reflect on who I used to be, how I grew up, and who I desire to be. So through the constant search of transform uh, personal development to internally transform myself allows me to really portray or um, ask questions to say, Leslie on who she is and who she desires to become and what kind of life she wants to live. Yeah. yeah Scotty, Scotty, really quick, uh, just yeah. uh, some takeaways for the listeners. What were, what are two books that come to mind that were some of the most impactful? Well, He's the read first so one, many books. Yeah, right, but no, the first one, the one that where I got a lot of questions when I started talking with Leslie, um, it was one of the first books I read, which was in 2013. Um, yeah, 2013, 2014, as I transferred up to Arizona State University. That one was um, How to Win Friends and Influence People by Dale Carnegie. Um, I actually read that one two or three times because I would like ride the light rail to school at Tempe and I would just reread that book because it was very, at that time of my life, really allowed me to grow and evolve as a person. Um, so how to win friends and influence people. And another one that really stands out to me is a 30 day challenge I did called the, the book, the secret. Um, there's a movie, the secret, but this, this book the secret actually has a 30 day challenge within it that where every day you do the challenge and it progresses as each day goes on. And by the end of the 30 days, you've completed this really challenging 30 day program, um, which opens up your mind and opens up a lot of possibilities. Oh, that, that's so good. I mean, I love the extended challenges too. And it sounds like your relationship has been built a lot on challenges and not, not challenges as in, things that have come up to limit well, you, but you actually 
uh, are always expanding and, and growing yourself. So I think, Leslie, you had something to say there, but I wanted to jump ahead to now and Leslie ask about adventure because that's such a huge part of what you both are doing now. So tell me a little bit about what adventure can bring into couples' lives and their experience of their partner. Adventures. Oh, like I just get so excited just hearing that word. <laughs> um, basically, adventure is everything. I mean, I just, I love just watching children. I don't have any children, but anytime I'm out and about at the store, I just love watching children. And if you take a minute to watch children, especially when they're outside and in nature, they are so curious about what's this? What's that? Why is this green? Why is this like this? Or whatever they touch and they feel and they move, they move. And like, to me, that is adventure. And that is, um, what can be possible for your relationship or your partnership. And this also goes, if you're single, your friendships, your family members, relationships within your family members, relationships within your coworkers. Um, but incorporating that adventurous lifestyle, kind of like we've been talking about the last few minutes with our challenges that we used to do and really digging deeper, that's part of the adventure. Um, relating it to actual, you know, what you define as adventure when we were in Asia, it's the same thing. You get curious, you get that nervous feeling when, you know, whenever we were about to go jump off a cliff or go do a canyoneering experience, you get that nervous feeling, you get that excitement, you get that adrenaline and you just want more and more. And whenever you leave the experience, you leave like empowered, like you just accomplished something and that you're ready for more. So bringing that into a relationship, it's the same thing. There's no difference. Get curious about your partner. Touch, feel, move together, be outside together, um, connect in different ways. Throw your phone away. I mean, like, get your phone out of the picture and just connect, touch, move. Um, get nervous. I mean, there's times Scotty will ask me questions where it doesn't, I get a little nervous. Like, he gets kind of deep and maybe I don't want to talk about it, but I always will leave the experience empowered and more connected. I love it so much. And I, I, I mean, there's so many transformative lessons I know we can get from you. And I, I know that our audience will be curious about how you decided to travel in Asia for six months. I mean, that's pretty remarkable. I would say that most people would say, oh, there's no way I could travel for six months. I have work. I have obligations. So number one, how did you decide to go travel for six months? And what were some of the steps you put in place to create the freedom to do that? Go ahead. Well, oh, yeah. It's your baby. The trip was your baby. That was a spark to everything. So I had decided last year when I was um, – at ASU, and at the end of, oh, I knew I wanted to travel once I graduated from a university, graduated from Arizona State University. And for the last year of college in 2015 to 2016, I was kind of looking into where I wanted to travel. I was working two jobs throughout my university, in addition to school full time, saving up to go travel once I graduated. I wanted to go travel. I've never really traveled outside of the country for international traveling. I haven't been on an extended traveling experience and working as a personal trainer for years and years, for the past five years, my older clients who I used to specialize in, they would always encourage me to travel when I was young, to go out and see the world because those older citizens who did do that, they loved that experience and those who were not able to wish they had done it. So I really took that to heart and last year in May, when I graduated, um, I had decided to travel to Asia for a couple of reasons. First, I wanted a cultural experience. I wanted to visit second world, third world countries where I could really dive into a culture to see how other places live. Because I only know how America lives. I only know America's, you know, what thoughts, their, their beliefs, their values. So that was the first and most important reason that I wanted to go to Asia. Well, I chose Asia. Secondly, I want our dollar goes such a long way in Asia. I looked into Europe, but Europe is you know not much different from the westernized uh, countries over here. It, it's 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 kind of expensive. Um, it's much it's more challenging to travel long term. So I chose Asia for the cultural experience and for how far our dollar goes. 
Now the original trip was supposed to be three months. And it was, you know, a couple weeks into our travels, we extended it and doubled the length of our trip to six months because we were just purely like we were consumed by the experiences of the culture and the and traveling experiences along the way. And this was my plan. And as I met Leslie, as we grow, we we're growing together after our Havasu Pie trip last March um, in 2016. I invited Leslie. I was like, hey, Leslie, you know, you, you've passed the criteria. You're working your way up to be my girlfriend. Actually, that time you, do, you did say yes to be my girlfriend. So in March, she did say yes to be my girlfriend, March <laughs> last year. And that's when I extend the invitation to her. Hey, in May, when I graduate, I'm going to travel to Asia for three months. Are you interested? And that's where you can continue. Well, and this. to kind of answer your question on, you know, some people might say, oh, I could never do that. I said that too. I mean, like I said previous, I've, I've been a little, I've always been a free spirit. So I love the idea of adventure and travel. And I had always wanted to travel abroad. So I kind of was like, wow, this is a great opportunity. So I thought about it. I thought how crazy it was. Um, and I told Scotty, my first answer was, okay, I'll do like two weeks. Two weeks is a long time, right? Because in our American society, two weeks is a very long time. And then I said, oh, you know, what the heck? I'll do one month. Might as well, you know, go big, right? And um, then it just kind of kept evolving because the thing is, that's what's so cool about adventure is once you kind of get that open mind around something, it only will grow. So you just dabble with it a little bit. And then it's like, no, I can do longer. No, I do want to do more. And so next thing you know, I said, you know what? I'm going to go for two months. Um, I would go for the whole three months, but this is your baby. And I want you to have that solo experience that you originally were going to have. So you're going to do a month by yourself and then I'll come join you. And so like, and then like he said, once we got over there, we saw how far our dollar could really go. And we were able to double our trip with the same amount of money. So because we had just overplanned being the Americans that we are. Mm -hmm. So our money ended up going double as much as we ha had originally thought. And that's kind of how that happened. Yeah. I wanted to ask a question. Um, I mean, again, like you're sharing so, um, so many amazing things. There are so many questions I want to ask, but <laughs> one or two that really stand out is that, you know, I mean, I know that even for Aaron and I, when we made the leap of faith and completely changed our career direction and everything, there's, there's this false sense of security that people see in their career. And they almost have this fear that they won't ever find a job again. You know, I, I've heard people say, I really feel like I need like three or six months off, like just to do some reflection, really connect to myself, but I'm afraid I won't get a job again. So can you speak to basically just how really it is easy and possible to get work again? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That was one of my biggest fears. Yeah, is when I left, yeah, I dealt with that a lot. I had a lot of struggles coming back to America around this. And last May when I left to go three months, I had, I just graduated. I knew when I come back, it would be an open slate. It would be any possibility I wanted. I got an introduction to a corporate life in corporate wellness and I knew what that was like. So when I left, which turned out to be six months, when I was coming back, I had a lot of struggle. Um, I was like, I didn't know what I wanted to do. I was planning to move somewhere else other than Arizona. And when I came back to Arizona, I came out with no plans. I didn't even plan a job. I didn't have any plans to work anywhere. But within a couple of weeks, within a few weeks, um, I was able to find a job, find a couple of jobs and a place to live. It all where everything worked out through reaching out to my connections, reaching out to friends uh, who who have always supported me, and they've allowed to be, you know to step into the direction of where I am now. I leaving for six months and coming back, everything is still the same. When you, when we left the country and coming back, everyone, everything is the same. All the jobs are still there. No, there's nothing going anywhere. Opportunities are everywhere. It's just having the open mind and the belief that it, that it is there. When, and that's the big, that's the most important part, having the open mind and believing that the opportunities are there. I got caught up when I was coming back to the States. I was, uh, I viewed it from a negative mindset and I was a little bit more closed off because 
I was very confused. Um, so for people who are looking to travel two weeks, a month, two months, get a little break from their work, the, the field that they are in, when they choose to leave and come back to the States, there's going to, there is not, nothing's going to change. All the opportunities will still be there and they can jump right back into that field if they have not shifted, if they have not shifted in their career and what they want to do. Mm, that's so good. I think that's such a change from how people view it. So thank you so much for mentioning that. And really wanted to conclude with you both. And Leslie, I'll ask you first. For those that are feeling right now in this podcast, like, the, yes, this feels so right to me to bring adventure into my life. The thing that could be stopping them lastly is, oh, man, I don't know where to go next. So that's so perfect in share with us what American Wander Love is and how people can partner with you to make this happen in their own life. Absolutely. Um, we have a lot of exciting things coming up. We have a 90-day transformational program called Living the Adventures of Life that we are creating for this reason right here. We run into so many people after talking to them. They're like, oh, well, that sounds great, but I don't know what like you said, I don't know where to start. I don't know what to do. I don't have friends that are into this. So I don't, you know, and that just stops them dead in their, in their tracks. So we have seen time and time again, after talking to people that a lot of the times, you know, whatever their reason is for why they can't, it's usually something deeper. So they'll say, Oh, I can't because of this, or I can't because of that. But really there's something underneath that they, they, they might need to tackle or face before they can have the freedom to go and travel. And also too, one thing I did wanna say is adventure doesn't, ha like we think of adventure, we think of travel, adrenaline, exciting, but we really want to bring the adventure, whatever that is for your life. You can have adventure, we say all the time, you can have adventure going to the grocery store. You can have adventure walking your dog. But really it's more of a mindset and more of a way that your eyes view this world than it is that you have to, you know, you don't have to go to Asia for six months to live in a fulfilled, passionate life of love and contribution. Oh. So. Yeah. yeah <laughs> that's so oh that's so beautiful the mindset i love it they don't have to go anywhere to, to experience adventure they can do it now and so scotty where can they find out more about your programs where can people see your videos your blogs your blogs and see all that you're up to yes so we're very active on our facebook page our uh traveling inspirational adventure page is american wonder love which is both on facebook and instagram and and at the end of August, August 25th and 26th, we are doing a two-day health and fitness expo where we're partnered up with 40 other vendors where we'll, we will be launching our 12-week transformational program to living the adventures of life. So up until then, we can be contacted through our Facebook page. We'll have our email address on there um, at American Wonder Love. We do also have a website, and it's just everything's AmericanWonderLove.com, at AmericanWonderLove, and email AmericanWonderLove at gmail.com. Well, I'm guessing just American Wonder Love is the thing to remember. Um, right. Well, literally, I mean, we could talk for hours and hours, and just thank you for giving the community some insight into how they can bring adventure into their life. Thank you for thinking outside the box and living a remarkable life. And really as what we say for empowered couples is fulfilling your dreams as a couple. So really thank you for sharing and being so amazing. And I know that the community will find more out about you. So thank you so much. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you guys for having us on here.